welcome to another episode of The Final Siren. It's episode five. You're here with Duck and Oz from the Purple Rain. Howdy. I might just adjust that mic a little bit, Oz. How's that look? Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, mate, the Dockers have just won and they haven't won a nail-biter either. <laughs> oh, it's nice and relaxing. We got to wander down to the change rooms, mate. The Fremantle Dockers, 11-10, 76 defeated. The Gold Coast Suns, 6-13-49, mate. So in the end, quite a comfortable win and a little bit of a... You know, just a relaxing, nice. The heart rate didn't get too high. Well, I really enjoyed not having to sprint down the stairs. So thank you, Fremantle Dockers, for uh, for that. I worked out this morning, so I didn't need the double up. So I really appreciated the casual walk down. Enjoyed the banter on the way down too. Um, and probably after what we would call a forgettable first half. Oh, well, second quarter, started. they started to get into it a little bit. Sec- what do they you re- mean second quarter? Se- se- that second quarter, mate, was nearly the worst quarter of football <laughs> I've seen from two teams that play AFL <laughs> in a long period of time. Now, after that, the second half was really great. Yeah. It was exciting. You it know was I'm a bit positive. free of flowing. You know it I'm was, uh, There was plenty of goals scored. But that, I mean, dead set, mate, that second quarter. <laughs> It's one of the all-time stinkers. But it doesn't matter because, mate, we've got to talk about a few people. Yeah. Let's start off with AP, Alex oh, Pierce, mate, the Alex big Pierce. moose. Mate, so let's just, let's just go back, back, back through our memory, memory yep. lane. 2015, he plays 13 games. Yep. 2016, he plays eight, breaks his leg. 17, no games. 18, comes back, plays 21 games. Really starts to develop and show us how good he is. 2019, starts off 11 games. Then I think it was a Collingwood game. Mm. Um, at the MCG, he's broken his leg again. Missed all of last year, and this is his second game after a setback. Played the first game and then a setback. Mate, he was absolutely immense. Yep. He was immense. He was an absolute rock in the back line. And I will say, mate, I'm the, I'm the first one to admit when I'm wrong. I was very much of the opinion that, look, I thought that potentially, maybe, he it, the, the game was done for him. He's injury prone, you know. But you see him play today... That's st- uh, the smother, even when they did kick the goal, the smother out of nowhere, mm. fantastic. The little hands in the way. He's a little bit of a master of the dark arts. He likes his body contact nice and early. Completely outmuscled um, young King. First time King's been kept goalless, and I don't, I don't think, that, I don't think uh, Gold Coast kicked a goal while we're walking down the stairs. I hope not. I don't think anything happened. But, mate, absolute... It's a, it's a fairy tale, tale story, mate. And touch wood, you know, everything continues on. Mm. And, you know, we've got a guy who is that key defender because it's the one thing that we, we lack is that real key defender that can play on the Hawkins, the Kennedys, the King types. Yep. You know, so, you know, we saw against Port Adelaide, we really missed that key defender to play on, um, what's the big fella, Big Dixon. And Pierce just showed how valuable he is to yep. the side. Yeah, look, basically a calming influence down back. And last week, Trav talked about buffering in defence and being able to not only body up and, and make sure we're winning the contest down back, but making sure we're driving forward as well. And I thought Pierce provided both. He was a fantastic uh, tall defender in its first instance, getting hands on balls, spoiling contests, making sure King didn't, King didn't take any marks. But he was also able to provide drive out of D50. And that, for me, is something that I think we've missed a little bit from you know the, the key tools. And I really enjoyed seeing him back there. Put a little tear to the eye, um, yeah. seeing him streaming out of defence with that uh, immensely long hair of his. And it, I believe it's now got its own Twitter account, um, uh, Pierce's long hair or whatever it's called. But fantastic to see him in the back line. And I think... He actually brings confidence to the rest of the defenders that are around there because they see the big moose there and it's okay, yeah, we've got ourselves sorted here. So I really enjoyed that from AP. Um, And you already touched on it before, but that spoil where he was out of the contest and he just goes horizontal and yeah, keeps Yeah, the big King smother. And we goal. always look, need more smothers. Mate. And look, it did turn into a, a goal, but having said that, you know, fantastic. So, yeah. oh, here we go. All right, looks oh, like we're going to be joined by the big kahuna, mate. Here we and go. I reckon that oh, I've got the wrong... You chuck those ones on, mate. Chuck those lids on. All right. I'll chuck these ones on. What side am I, left or right? Beautiful. Josh Tracy, a.k.a. the Dick Cyclone, a.k.a. the big kahuna, mate. Fantastic game today. What are your thoughts on it? Two goals, three? Yeah, just obviously looking to build every week. Um, just getting, building that confidence and, you know, allowing my teammates to be able to use me more and um, hopefully that they back me in. Yep. I really enjoyed seeing you lead hard at the contest, mate. And if you're not taking a mark, you're killing someone. And I love that. Uh, and I've been calling for the big cyclone to be in from the beginning, but I've loved the build as well. So seeing you in there, very physical, attacking the contest, 
and just giving us those one percenters. Um, but it's great to see you taking those clunks now and kicking goals. Are you, are you building more confidence in, um, in each game that you play? Yeah, definitely, I suppose. Uh, the first few games was probably just a lack of confidence to sort of get in other people's way and sort of things like that. But obviously with Tabs going out of the side, I felt like there was a need to kind of step up and the boys that would rely on me a little bit more, which um, I think it was probably the Port Adelaide game where it changed for me. Okay. Um, and I got to more contests. I started, I clunked a few, and even though I just crashed a pack, and I thought that was really important. And then went into last week and managed to probably have a breakout game for me and mm. I think that's where it's all going to sort of start um, and then obviously just back myself against any opponent that I've got now and hope that the boys can trust to kick it to me. Now mate you're from Kahuna, small country town outside of Victoria, two questions for a start, firstly is the Kahuna postcode your uh, your passcode on your, your phone because I know Tamblup's my passcode. No nah, it's actually not. No it's not, <laughs> no. it's all zeros, um, but <laughs> Talk, talk, talk to us about yeah, Kahuna, because I'm from sunny Tambler, which I think is just there. Mate. Town of friendship, mate. Small town as well. Uh, what, what's Kahuna all about? What's the main industry? And are there any other famous people that have come out of Kahuna? Are you the, the first footy player? No, nah, I'm not. Um, yeah, so Marty Hoare at Melbourne. He's, sort of, he's in the area. Small town Leechville, just up the road. Um, Flynn Appleby was on Collingwood's list. He's now captain of the North Melbourne VFL. So there's a few names that yep. have lingered around, you know, a few boys that have ventured to VFL and things like that. Um, it's a, a, probably a dairy farming industry. Uh, so I'm off a dairy farm just out of town. And yeah, it's probably one of those local towns that, you know, thrives on the footy club and the cricket club and things like that. And, um, you know, everyone just gets in supports it. And it's just a town where everyone knows everyone, everyone knows what's going on. And yeah. It's just a tight knit um, town. And yeah, it's really good. Now, mate, it, Frio loves a good country player. And if you look across the, um, the list, we, we love our country players. And another guy coming in, you love the tackle, don't you? You love getting someone wrapped up in those big arms of yours and just driving him into the ground. And you can just see that, that intent. And from a fan's perspective, when we see that, it's like, holy crap, this is what we want to see. Oh, it's probably just the way I model my game. Just like to bring that physical side. You know, if I'm not impacting it disposal-wise or on the scoreboard, that that's my aspect of the game to get into the game um, and I feel if I can bring both that and you know getting my hands on the footy it's going to hold me in good stead yeah fantastic now just on your obviously your, your your recruitment into the Dockers rookie listed player mate what just talk us through I know it's a bit far, further away but that draft night mate where was there a little bit of nerves first night and then we go into the rookie list and you get picked up by the Dockers yeah it was a bit of an unknown really obviously not having played footy uh, was really tough and knew that it was probably wasn't going to happen um, and was f that night was pretty shattered honestly even though I didn't think there would be an outcome out of it really um, and then yeah spoke to my manager that night and we didn't really know what was going to happen on the, the next day on the Thursday um, and yeah we're just sitting there um, watching the computer because it wasn't on anything and it just popped up and I wasn't actually watching it but like mum was watching it and I just heard this big squeal. <laughs> and then the phone rang. And I, I honestly can't remember who it was that rang. But I'm pretty sure it was Wolsey. And he's just like, mate, pack your bags. You're coming to Frio. So, Fantastic. Yeah, it, was just, it was kind of all a blur for that day and a bit. And I was on a plane in two days and over here. Wow. So it was unbelievable. So did Frio not speak to you beforehand? Did you have an idea that they were interested? Had you spoken to them beforehand? Yeah, probably the club that I'd spoke to the most. Okay, yeah. Um, and was confident. Yeah, obviously that if I happen to go anywhere, that that might have been yep. you know, the end destination. Um, and yeah, bloody glad it, it was, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, look, we, from a fan's perspective, it's great to see another key position, you know, come in and, and just have that impact. And, you know, where we get to sit, we get to listen to the commentary as well. And the great forwards talk about you with a lot of love, you know, the Dunstalls, the Pavs, and they, they just love the way, you, you know, straight leads up, great hands and great kick too. And talk to us about your kicking action, mate, because it's so simple and beautiful. It's an art form to watch. And it looks like you can kick it a good 55, 60 metres. Just out of curiosity, how far have you dobbed one in from? Uh, I don't know. Probably that one, my first one. Yeah. Uh, against Sydney. That yeah. was probably my biggest one. There you um, go. But yeah, it's just something that I worked a lot on when I first got here. I had, sort of had a few issues. Um, kicking across my body was probably the big one. Yeah. And I just thought I'd get back to basics and really just figure it out um, and just hammer at it away and now I feel it's like really basic um, the boys are always commenting on it so 
yeah, I feel really comfortable in it. Even though uh, yeah, I missed a couple today, but still really confident in my ability yeah. and in my technique. Nice. Just talk us through that third quarter, mate, because you kind of you broke the game open. When you're on like that, are you just like, boys, just keep feeding it to me? You know, it kind of sucks with the six 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 because you feel like you should just be like, get out of, boys, out of the fifty. <laughs> Big coon is on here, boys. <laughs> just clear. How, how many uh, how many good games do you reckon you're off but from doing that? Just telling the boys to clear out. Um, I don't know. Probably a few years just to build a bit more confidence, <laughs> just to go uh, get out. But you know, it's just one of those things. We just like to work together, and um, I feel like that's how I start well. Like if I can clunk one real early, that's when I know I'm on. Um, if I can get my hands on the footy early, and just sort of get involved from really on. If I sort of got to wait. Yeah, and it sort of delays a little bit, and then I find it hard to get into the game. So yeah, I've been finding it really good lately because I'm starting on getting my hands on the ball early and can impact the game. Nice. Now, obviously, big forwards boys club down there. You know, you're getting amongst it. We always ask this question. You have to answer without thinking. Who's the weirdest unit at the club? <laughs> Do you reckon you'd be able to answer it without me answering it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reckon it'd be another big fella down the floor. Like <laughs> he may not have played today. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomatic, I love um, it. Just, just on, uh, obviously, Tabs and Lob, mate, how much have they got around you in terms of learning your craft and teaching you and taking you under their wing? Oh, so much. It's been unbelievable. Um, when I first got here, we were... Um, all us Vic boys were stuck in quarantine. So I think that was... We had to train separately, different hours of the day in our little groups. And I think that was what really helped. Tabs just sort of took me under and we really bonded um, so well. And then obviously got to into work with Lobby with the attributes he brings. And, you know, even David Hale has been unbelievable. Um, just working constantly every week with body position, things like that. So it's been really good. Interesting, mate. Well, uh, I think that'll... Yeah, you got yeah. any more questions, Oz? Thank no. you very much for joining us. Uh, um, Look, big thing, Josh. Obviously, the big kahuna or the cyclone Tracy or, of course, our hybrid that we like to call you the dick cyclone, mate, because it's, it's a bit of gags. So obviously, big kahuna is your favourite of nah, the nicknames. No, it's actually not. I don't, where, where did it come from, like, the big kahuna? Uh, like, I think it was... Uh, they, they said it on... Jared, was it Jared Healy? It might have been Jared Healy. Uh, I thought the no. media said that you got... That was your that was your nickname out of the two. Oh. What do you prefer? You can oh, set no, the I like, straight now. I like your dick, Tracy. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah? yeah get Boy, around it. Matty Boyd pulls that out a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah. He likes it. Yeah. Or Dick Cyclone. What is it? Dick, dick Cyclone, Cyclone yeah, mate. Yeah, there you go. Oh, <laughs> dick Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. Cyclone Tracy. Matty, Matty dick Boyd. Dick Cyclone. <laughs> Put it together, mate. Synergy. Yeah, nah. Whatever. But just next time you kick a goal, maybe a bit of this, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> Even though a Cyclone. Well, I guess. Yeah, just give it one of these ones for the Cyclone. <laughs> right, I'll see what I can do for you. So, uh, but Joshy, mate, thank you very much for joining yeah. us. Fantastic game. Um, like I said, broke it open in the third quarter, mate. Really fantastic. And yeah. love your goal kicking. Love everything you're doing. Keep at doing what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Heath. Boys, appreciate it. Cheers, thanks, mate. mate. Thank Cheers. You. Alrighty, well, Oz, mate, fantastic. T mate, talking to the bloody, the Dick Cyclone, mate, and I'm glad he loves the nickname. Oh, it's, it's great, uh, it's, it's great. Good. The Big Kahuna didn't, didn't, didn't like the Big Kahuna that much. Well, that's but, uh, good. That's alright. Stick Let's, with uh, the purple rain. Right, get around the Cyclone yeah. movement, I reckon, guys. And maybe in the crowd, Yeah. the Cyclone kicks a goal, we're giving it the Cyclone. Well, movement. we need something. Oh, we got, like, when you yeah. look at other clubs, you've got Shotgun Matheson, you've got all these people that pull out the arrows the and whatnot. Arrows. We've got the cyclone. The cyclone, oh, give it the like cyclone it. movement. Yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, mate, just getting back into the game because we didn't get to finish that off. Mm. Obviously, talked about cyclones third quarter. Um, Doodle Dooman, mate, the skinny backman. Yeah. Thought he played probably one of his best, best games. games at the club. Yeah, Fantastic. 100%. 100%. Um, dominated uh, uh, for large periods, I thought. Really won his position. Mm. Uh, worked really hard. Ended up with, uh, what's that, 22 disposals, mate, and uh, nine marks. So, fantastic by the Doodle Dooman. Uh, mate, Asian Acres, two guys that are pretty maligned um, by fans often, and, and, you know, they cop a little bit of heat. Um, but, mate, they had outstanding games. Aish was just about best yep. on with 31 disposals. Yep. And Acres, 27 disposals, goes in the ruck. He's a bit of a Mr. Fixer. Brought a bit of attitude and a bit of anger. And I think yep. Aish as well. I think both of them got a bit angry today, mate. It was a little bit of a... Aish's anger came from an egregious call early on from the fans' perspective, of course. And this is the third week that Aish has had 20-plus possessions. But I thought... This game in particular was where his 20 possessions actually mattered in terms of quality possessions. Mm. And he was able to defuse situations, particularly intercept marks, driving the ball forward, and just making really good decisions by hand. So I thought the game by him today was sensational. Mate, the, the two other guys I just want to talk about, and especially their second halves, uh, the ageless wonder, the skipper for today, David yeah, Mundy. Surely. 
No, I don't think he's got enough touches for a rising star. Okay. Close okay. to. But right. his okay. second half in particular. Yeah. And the connection between Hodor, the birthday boy, yeah. big Sean Darcy, and David Mundy, two guys that are on the opposite end of the age spectrum. Yeah. Although I guess they're both kind of young, young at heart. Yeah. But um, David Mundy and big Hodor, Sean Darcy, their, their connection and their synergy yeah. – from centre clearances was outstanding. And that's yeah. what really got us on top in that third quarter towards the end. But um, I loved, I loved Sean Darcy's goal and the birthday boy celebration, mate. Yeah. I wouldn't have mind a little blowout there. A little blowout out of the, the candles. Cake, cupcake. Yeah, blowout But look, the shout out to Michael Walters, who sensed the occasion, and rather than taking it upon himself, who because he's just the, you know one of the best kicks in the, uh, in the side, why not kick it to the Ruckman? But that's okay. He sensed the occasion. And, of course, Darcy cool enough to go back and slot it. So fantastic work from him. I think my highlight for, um, uh, for Darcy was the tip out the back to Mundy and fooled everybody, ran into open space, inside 50 kick goal, fantastic. Yeah, and that's just, I mean, uh, yeah. Sean Darcy's career is just projecting to the, the stratosphere and he's a guy clearly loves the club, clearly loves getting around the boys, the big number good four. Good country boy again. Good country boy again, uh-huh. yeah. Um, plenty of good country boys, mate, unlike you, who's a city, <laughs> city guy, soft hands and stuff like that. Um, no, but look, good good country boy, big Hodor, mate, absolutely loved his game. And uh, I mean, Duff wrote about it today in the West and speaking of Dockery, cheers, Rhino. But... Um, Duff, Duff spoke about it in the West, and he, it's, he's one of the most improved players. But we've seen this progression. Mm. You forget he's 22. Yeah. You forget he's so young. Yeah. I mean, if we're getting 10, 10 more years of this, mate, yeah. I tell you what, the future's looking very bright. Yeah. Mate, we go into the bye now. We're six and seven, I believe, um, you know, and hopefully we can get some of the guys back who are on the injury list. Hopefully Fifey potentially comes back. Um, you know our skipper. He he looks like he should be should be on the way back. Bailey Banfield played today in Peel. Um, we'll see with uh, we'll see with someone like a Griffin Logue. He had concussion, but he should be back sooner mm. rather than later. Yeah. Ethan Hughes. He's still on the TBAs, but we've seen the footage of his arms getting oh, stronger yeah. and stronger, and he's really missed Ethan Hughes, mate. Um, you know, and Switter. He's he's a test, so he's close to coming back as well. And and our our, our weird unit tabs, yep. mate. The one of the weirdos going around there, but you know, I love him. A, love him. You got to love him. You know, the interesting thing is, how Dockery would it be? Speaking of Dockery, mm. in the time where we've got the most amount of injuries, and it looks like it's catastrophic for the club. We, have, we go into the bye. We've had a great win. All of a sudden, we have this momentum. We start getting players back. And then we just have this finals tilt. Now, forgive me for being a fan. Forgive me for being a fan who's up and about. But can you just imagine from here, if we scrape into finals and go into a run, would that not be the most dockery of docker runs? I was... Are you saying we're a bit of a... Sniff? Uh, Mate, speaking of sniffs, a couple of guys that I thought debuted today. uh, Look... You know, it's a it's a tough one to get out there on your debut and, and try and impact the game too much. But I thought Weston and Walker um, both both showed that they've got a bit about them. Yep. A um, bit of pace here and there. Yeah. Uh, Weston in particular, there was one uh, there was one situation where he he definitely put the Jets on, and the same with Walker off that half back. Yeah. Walker wanted the one too. Yeah. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. He's but like, what well, do I do? Yeah. There was now nah, we'll turn around. But mate, Walker and Weston, they they've got a little bit of spunk about them, mate. Oh. And look. I like that. Midweek, I think we, I think JLo was schooled up, I believe, by Henry about the the drip. I mean, that was gags. If you didn't see it, it's <laughs> Freo Media put up a great thing. Check it out. Um, but he does walk with swagger. Um, got a bit of swagger. Yeah, oh, I love it. We've got some stylish players. Oh, mate. we do. We've got some interesting. We've got units, some but units. We also got some, uh, <laughs> some stylish <laughs> yeah. players, mate. Yeah. All right, guys, on that note, Oz, you got anything else you want to... No, fantastic no? Okay. game. Great to get another win. Oh, and, just, um, you know what, man? It was just good to win the game yeah. and walk down the stairs more than anything. <laughs> and I know the fans out there are probably feeling the same. They're able to, you know, it's Saturday afternoon now. It's a weird time. It's weird. I feel like it's either it should be Sunday night or Saturday at 9 o'clock. But, um, yeah. look, Saturday, Arvo, enjoy the win. Don't launch too hard, Dockers fans, but, you know, yeah. feel free to have the... <laughs> got a day to own, recover. <laughs> yeah, you do have a day to recover. And what, how good does this make the weekend, yeah. Dockers fans? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Remember, we are Purple Rain. We're at Purple Rain 95 on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at the Purple Rain 95 on TikTok. You know, just stuff. Yeah, um, yeah why not add us? And uh, our show's every Monday afternoon, and we release it Monday night slash Tuesday morning. That's right. All right, see you guys. See you later, guys. <laughs>